Okay, so in this clip we're going to configure all of our Docker engine daemons to require TLS. This means, and you know what, this comes in like bold capital italics with accompanying red flashing warning signs, these here, telling us that all Docker engine daemons will henceforth no longer accept commands that are not signed with TLS keys. And I've fallen victim to this enough times myself when running tests after enabling TLS only for my commands to fail and me think, oh rats, like I've broken something, then to read the error more closely and be like, Nigel, you donkey, you're sending unsigned commands. So yeah, be prepared. This will not only restart each engine daemon, which in and of itself needs to be carefully considered in production, and we'll talk about it in a sec, but it renders every daemon unwilling to communicate with non-TLS enabled clients. So what I hinted at as well there, right? This is really important in production environments. When restarting engine daemons, containers on that host are going to be impacted. So you're going to want to give some thought to the order in which you restart them. So for example, you might want to restart daemons hosting the secondary swarm managers before hitting the one that hosts the primary. That way, you reduce the number of leader elections and flip-flopping of who's the primary manager. So, say if we restarted the daemon that's hosting the swarm primary manager first, right? We'd kick off a leader election and we'd get a new primary. But then, at some point later, we'd need to do the same again on the new primary, kicking off another leader election and another leader promotion. And if you get your ordering like truly messed up, well you could potentially end up invoking a leader election on every restart. So you want to give this work some thought in the real world. Anyway, here on Manager 1, we need to open up the Docker config file. This is an Ubuntu 14.04 system, so it's traditional init, or actually I think maybe it's upstart init, but anyway it's not system D. So the Docker config file's here in Etsy default Docker. If you are using system D, then you're probably going to use a drop-in file in Etsy system D system docker.service.d, or maybe just docker.service. Anyway, on my machine it's here. Right, we want to edit this line down here, docker opts, and we're looking to add these flags. Okay, uh, let me justify that. Okay, phew, good. Well, first up, we're telling this engine daemon to only listen on the network, and then to use TCP port 2376, which is the official secured docker port. Then we're adding four TLS related flags, TLS verify to turn on authentication, and TLS CA cert, to tell it which CA we're going to be trusting. And it's the combination of these that makes sure the engine daemon here only accepts commands from clients authenticated by a certificate issued by the CA specified in TLS CA cert here. This obviously means in a later step we're going to need to configure clients to sign commands with certs. We'll do that, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Now these other two flags here these specify the locations of the node's own keys, and these get used by the engine daemon itself, so it too can be authenticated by clients and the likes. So yeah, we add them here just like this. So we'll give that a save and close. Uh, yep. And we need to restart the daemon. Now remember, be careful doing this in production, yeah? So, like, we're on manager one here, so we've got three containers running. A console server, a swarm manager, and I think we started a registrator container as well. But the console and swarm manager containers are obviously important cluster services, so be careful. Now, despite the fact that we started the swarm manager and the console containers with the restart unless stopped policy, and you might actually find that they do come back up automatically, but later on we're going to trash them and restart them anew with TLS flags. But I still can't stress this enough. In the real world, and especially in proper production environments, this is something you want to be really careful about doing. Anyway, it looks good, but I always like to do a quick PS just to make sure it worked, because I am telling you right, I have fat fingered this config file more times than I'd like to remember. But also, in fact... Yeah, so it is running. And all these here look like console ports being mapped, so console's probably back up. But yeah, we can also see that those TLS options that we just set have taken. So yeah, I always recommend you check your daemon restarts with a quick PS. But that's it, right? All of the scary restarting of the daemon stuff aside, that is our engine daemon, at least here on Manager 1, 
configured and operating with TLS so it will now only accept incoming commands from clients that sign them with keys issued by our CA and remember we've also specified the location of the engine demons own keys so that it can also sign communications well obviously now we need to go do this for every other node in the infrastructure and you know what this time I'm gonna use the force to instantaneously do this on every other engine daemon in the environment okay done every node is now configured to use TLS for all daemon related communication and looking at our plan yep that is this item here completed all of our engine daemons fully configured for TLS next let's configure the swarm manager process for TLS